Here is successful global consultant and renowned author Andrew Miller talking to business owners and executives about how to accelerate growth and maximize profitability through operational excellence. But the reason I, I want to focus on these three things, the reason I like them is because they require no new capital or financial investment. That's why I call it operational excellence. It's growth through your existing operations. It's just looking at things differently. It's changing the mindset you have around how you approach different areas of your organization, whether it's your customers, whether it's your employees, whether it's your processes. We look at things differently in order to be able to improve our performance, which of course leads to financial improvement, whether it's growth, whether it's maximizing profitability. So the first thing I want to talk about is we'll start with a general theme of prioritization, but really what it comes down to is finding your one priority. So you know, a lot of organizations I work with, we get into this discussion, this push-pull about prioritization. You know, I'm already working on five things, and then something else comes up, so I just end up working on a sixth thing. And, and what I advise my clients is you've got to start with one thing, one priority, right? That can only come from knowing what your ideal future state is. So there's qu three questions we have to think about when we talk about identifying your one priority. The first question is, what is my ideal future state? So if I'm sitting here 12 months from now, 6 months from now, 12 months from now, 18 months from now, where is my organization at? What's the ideal future state for my organization? The second question is, what is the fastest way for me to achieve it? So that's when you really start talking about strategies. That second question is, you know, what is the fastest way for me to achieve that ideal future state? Now, I might put as a, as a side order to that question, most effective. So fastest and most effective. We don't only want to talk about speed, but it's a very important component of it. If I can figure out a way to achieve that ideal future state in six months versus 12, all of you as business owners or you know, senior executives in, other, in big companies understand that that's valuable. If I can do something twice as fast, I'm going to be able to do it. The third question we have to think about then is also, how do we continue to make progress? So that word, I'll use the word sustainability. So what's my ideal future state? What's the fastest way for me to get there? And how do I keep making progress towards that ideal future state? I've used this chart with lots of clients and lots of audiences. And I think people, in terms of framing what the, and I'll use the word opportunity, is. Um, and maybe sometimes it opens people's eyes a little bit as to why they need to change. We've got two factors that we're, think, we're considering here. The quality of your ideas. Are they high or are they low? And your ability to execute or implement those ideas. Do you have a strong ability to execute or a poor ability to execute? And so I've used very sophisticated labeling for the chart, right? Quadrants one, two, three, and four. Just to explain it very quickly, if you have a low quality of ideas and a poor ability to execute them, you're obviously in quadrant one. The place that I would assume that everybody wants to be, and I, I know where I'd want to be, quadrant four, where you have a high quality of ideas and you have a strong ability to implement and execute those <laughs> ideas. Now again, going back to what we talked about earlier, you have to reframe how you think about what your quality idea of ideas are. The more you use the framework here, and I'll go back if those of you are still drawing, the more you use, and whether you use these four or some other decision-making criteria, it, it, it's okay by me. I won't be insulted. But the more you use the discipline of saying, here's the four or five criteria we're going to use to determine whether or not an idea is a good one, the more likely you're going to move yourself closer to quadrant four. Think about FedEx or UPS, and let's go rewind the clock, let's say probably 10, 12 years ago, if you ever sent a package with FedEx or UPS. What do you think the number one question the customer service reps at FedEx and UPS got from their customers? Where's my package? Where's my package? Okay. Do you think they ever get a question now about where's my package? So what did they do? They shared information with their customers. They give you a tracking number. And they give you a website. And now you can go and you can find out where your package is anywhere from the post office you dropped it off at 
to the end result with the signature online. So I'll tell you, this is brilliant for two reasons. One is, not only does it re significantly reduce the administrative burden on FedEx and UPS employees, it's probably taken out 80% of the questions that they had to deal with. Where's my package? They'd have to look it up. Every call takes five, 10 minutes. So that's been completely eliminated now. So not only does it reduce what I would consider to be failure work, because it is failure work, they know where the package is, they're just not sharing the information with you. As soon as you pick up the phone and call and say, where's my package, they're able to look it up and find you and tell you it's in Pennsylvania, it's in Toronto, wherever it is, they know where it is, they just didn't share it. So they've reduced all of that failure work, all of that administrative burden. But I think what may be even more important is they've now empowered the customer to take control of that information. My name is Charles Benian, and I'm in the anxiety reduction business. Uh, my company provides mental health services to organizations as part of their benefit plan. Well, I, I think, you know, I think being in a small business and being a small business owner, um, I, I spend a lot of time working in the business rather than on the business. And so I, I'm, I'm constantly multitasking. So I think what I got out of Andrew's session, which he articulated, I believe, very clearly, um, is that there is a structure then when your company does have ideas, um, you need to determine whether or not that idea is, is worthwhile pursuing. Uh, because everybody has ideas and, and um, you know, I want to be able to grow the business. Um, so I want to be able to follow um, a, a certain structure. So Andrew was able to provide that. But I think the most important thing is, 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 um, is to identify what, what, what the ideal future state would look like for my company, not looking five years down the road, but, but looking at a year down the road. And this is where I want to be. And when I have a conversation with my management team a year from now, I want to be able to say, yeah, we reached that, that ideal state, rather than, than not having reached it. And so, so I found Andrew's session very helpful in that. This has been a video of Andrew Miller talking to business owners and executives on accelerating growth through operational excellence. To find out more about how Andrew can help your business, please visit acmconsulting.ca.